Okay guys, welcome back. This is your boy, The Rag Geek, and welcome to the very first of a series of videos where I'll be teaching you reinforced concrete design in Procone to come up with the very designs that you see on the screen right now where we have these bases where they've been reinforced specifications and everything and i'm going to be showing you that in procom so let's not waste too much time let's jump right into it and in this video what we're going to do is we're going to particularly focus on the interface and like i told you foundations that sit on bases okay so the first thing that you want to do is you want to come up to your program just open it up please don't mind my desktop too much things going on so in Procon, there's so many manuals and modules that you can do. I'll do another video on what everything is or the interface of Procon. But the thing that you want to do with the reinforced concrete foundation bases or the ones that sit on pad footings, what you want to do is you want to come up to the concrete module and then you want to go under components and then you want to go with the base. So like I told you, this video, what it's definitely going to be doing is just giving you an overview of the interface. And then we jump into the design of the parameters of the loads in the very next video. So this is what happens. Once you click the column design module, this is the interface that you get. So let me just make uh, make you preview with what's everything that is on the screen. So let's start with the very first um, thing. So the first thing that you see is base length A. So this is a visual user interface and I'm just gonna show you. So when you design a foundation or a base, the first thing that you wanna do is, you know, what we do as civil engineers is we assume things. So that's the basis of things. You always start with an assumption. So in this case, we're going to assume uh, a two by two foundation base. So once you have a two meters and then you enter two meters, like I told you, it's a visual thing. It already plots that on the screen for you. So as you can see in plan view, you already have a base that measures two meters in the X direction and two meters in the Y direction where you have the Y arrow and the X arrow. And the good thing about this is well, it also reminds you about the design code that you're using to come up with the uh, auto design your bases. And in this case, it shows you that we're using BS8810 by 1997. Sorry, but that's the one that I use. And it's still good enough, even to this day. And the good thing about this as well, it also gives you this error messages in red, where you're able to see where the things that you haven't entered. Like in this case, it's telling us there's no column dimensions entered, no loads entered, and base depth is less than one. And on oh, a host of all these other things, but then, let's just continue from there so after entering the length and the width of your base the next thing that the program prompts you to enter is for the columns so to start things off in a more simple thing simple manner what we're going to do is we're just going to start off with designing for a pad or foundation footing which is this one the pad footing which is one column so the first thing that it offers you you just want to go for column one and column two because this program allows you to design for a pad footing that has two columns, but we're going to be doing one column. So the first thing it enters you is C. So C is going to be the dimension of the column in the X direction. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go with the 500 millimeter uh, wide base. So I'm going to end up 0.5 because that's 500 millimeters is 5. Then. So the first thing, it was going to assume a circular column because it's... Um, it also does circular columns, but I don't want a circular column. We're going to do a rectangular. So the other thing is 0.55. So as you can see, if you want to design a circular column, all you have to do is to enter one value in uh, in the C. But if you want a rectangular column, you're going to have to enter another value in D. So this time I'm going to do a square column, which is 0.5 by 0.5 meters. So there you go. When you click, as you can see, the column, when you go to the screen, you already have a column that's 0.5 by 0.5 in the X and in the Y. Then the next thing it prompts you to enter where you see this E. This E just refers to the eccentricity of the column or the center of the column towards the center of the best. So let me just show you visually what this means. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a value of uh, 0.5. So by entering a value of 0.5, what you just did is you shifted the center of the column from the center of the base by 0.5 meters in the X direction. Okay. Same thing happens as well. If you want to go negative 0.5, what it does is shifts to the left so as you can see so it also works on a negative and positive values so e what you have to remember is it focuses on the interest centricity of the column based on the x direction same applies with f f let me just uh, hit zero back at e so that we return the column back to the centerpiece uh, where the center of the base and the center of the column align 
So with F, what it does is that it shifts. Uh, it also brings about eccentricity, but now this time it's in the Y direction. As you can see, I just shifted the center of the column from the center of the base by a meter. And unfortunately, this space is a two by two. So therefore, that means the distance from the center of this space to the outline is a one meter and one meter in either direction. So by shifting the column by one meter, essentially what I did is I pushed it to the edge and it doesn't really work. But today, what we're going to do is we want to focus on a column that does not have any eccentricity. So the next thing that uh, you have to focus on is the stub column height. But the stub column height, let me just enter value so that you can better appreciate what I'm trying to say. This is what we call the stub column. So if you come to, this is the plan view and this is the elevation view. It's already showing you what we meant by the stub column, the stub column height. So this is the column, the height of the column. Because what we did when we entered the values, we just came up with a plan, but we hadn't started building it up. So now we've introduced volume to it. So in that, in that area, this is the area of the column. Now this is the height, so we have volume to that. The next thing that you want to do, which is self-explanatory, is going to come to the base depth. Um, this is the depth of the base. I'm just going to enter a generic value for now. It's 0 0.55. And as you can see in the uh, window below, you, you already generated this is the base depth. So the base just came up. The next thing that you want to do is the soil cover. So Procon, what it does is that it automatically assumes that the base is underneath the soil. That's the only way it can make sense. You don't really need a base if it's going to be above ground. You know, it's, it's a simple rule for fact. So with the soil cover now, it shows that you have a stub column. How much of the stub column do you want it to be covered by the soil? I'm just going to put a meter. And as you can see, that is what happens. So one meter of the stub column is under the soil and 0 0.5 is above the soil. Okay. Soil density. Uh, concrete density. This one depends on what value that the code uses. So I remember BS, it's supposed to be 24 or 25, but I'm just going to use 25 for now. Um, but then it usually varies. Some people actually put it at 24 to be safe because I'm not too sure if it's, I'll just put it at 24.5. That's what you want to do. With the soil density as well, it's a various, uh, it comes up with a crypt because many soils have been tested beforehand. And these are the various figures of uh, soil densities that you can come up with. But for me, in my country as well, and I think with BS, it was supposed to be 18. So we're going to stick with that. And then the soil friction angle, the, this one is geotech technical as well, geo, uh, geotechnology. If you do the module on that, you probably know what this is. I go with 22. And uh, the one I use for the soil, the base friction constant, uh, it's another technicality. You can delve that deep into that in geotechnology is 0 0.5. Then the next thing that it prompts you to do is to ask you the rebar top depth uh, top x and rebar depth top y so what happens whenever you reinforce anything it comes in two layers so you're going to have two layers of steel at the top and at the bottom so you're going to have some reinforcing steel normally at the top and reinforcing steel normally at the bottom but you're always going to have reinforcing steel at the bottom at the top it's um it's optional but so it's the, basically what's asking you right here is the depth or the cover which is the center to bar cover you know the the out of the the depth from the top edge of the base to the center of the bar. So normally, what I use, um, if it's in the X, because the X is the topmost or the outermost layer, I go with fifty, and with this, I go with sixty. So same applies. So it's always fifty, and uh, it's sixty. So this also is derived from uh, cover. There is there's a section in every design code that tells you the cover that you need before you start designing everything it all depends on the more the type of exposure that the steel is going to be experiencing and also the type of concrete that you are going to use the strength of the concrete and also the aggregates that you're going to use to come up with your concrete so the next thing that you want to do is um is ask you the unlimited ULS over 10 in LF self weight factor so for me i use 0 0.9 so it's a uh, it's 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 a factor of safety in some way, but uh, just for now, I use 0 0.9, which is a very good thing if you design with BS as well. So with uh, self weight, these are factors. These are design factors. 1.4. If you're using BS, I'm quite sure you know what this is. 1.4. But if you're using sands in South Africa, you're definitely going to be using 1.2 because that's what SABS tells you to use. And then the maximum as uh, self weight limit bearing pressure. Uh, well, this one is the bearing pressure of the soil. This comes from geotechnical investigations and, um, yeah, 
So before you start doing any foundations, as you know, you have to request for soils test. So the soils test is going to come from the lab and the duty and the technicians are going to tell you how much uh, the maximum, the maximum soil, the soil bearing pressure of the soil. And, but usually as a safe set, people usually use 200 because that's like a minimum. So, because I know some people don't really do soils, soils, soils tests. So what they usually do is 200, but it's sort of an over design. And next thing that you're going to do it is, like I told you, I use 0 0.9 in this case, but here I'm going to use one because this is over 10 in. This one usually is applicable to retaining walls. In this case, maybe my sub chlorite was going to be two and uh, the soil cover as well was going to be two. Let me just put that as well. This would sort of act as a retaining wall. If this one could have acted as a retaining wall, it could be a column, but then it could stretch all the way to this. What we'll be doing is just mapping it for this certain meter or 0 0.5 meters that it would. So that's where it comes up. And the next thing that uh, we're about to wrap up and finish the video, the next thing that you would find or see is the FCU of base. This is the characteristic strength of the concrete that you're going to use to pour the base. Because what, what happens is you always pour the base before the column and they're never poured all together, all at once. So for the base, uh, most people, what they usually do is start off with 25. Anything below 25 can be dangerous and you should really try not to stick to it design for something less than that but the code will also guide you on what you should do and then the next thing is the fcu for the columns uh some people will try to take it up a notch pump it up to um the columns bump it up to 30 50 or going up but it's not a problem as well if you keep it at 25 but uh, some people what they do is they just make sure that it's 30 30 but i like to use 25 because you can never be too sure about the workmanship that's going to be on site usually what i usually do is i tell people to put them grade 30 and then uh you know i can have a fails if it's like aim for the moon aim for the stars if you miss you hit the moon so i aim for 30 but i always know i'm going to design it for 25 i'm not going to tell the contractor i designed it for 25 i'm going to tell them, yo put 30 grade 30 concrete but then in case they end up lowering the grade and coming up with 25 it's still a given but so Strange thing now, but still, I would love to design it with 210, but it affects a lot of things as well, because when you design with the less, and when you put uh, high grade steel, you kind of increase the shear that's going to go because of the bonding between the steel and the concrete. But then, that's a story for another day. So I just like to keep the steel to what's available. So most deformed bars come with an FY, this is a high tension steel, high grade steel, it's 460. And, uh, well, it might come as 410, which is easier, but then with steel, it's different from concrete now. You want to design it with 460. So if it comes up with 2 to 10, uh, this, this shear is going to be less, but then at least you're going to be safe. So the concrete is your best friends. And that's it. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the first video that we did where we just showed you the interface of how to design the bases. So the very first thing that we did is I showed you the interface. Basically, this is the input. The next thing is you can see we have managed to eliminate all the errors that were popping up in this window and now we just uh, with no loads entered so the next video i'm going to show you what the loads are and uh we're taking it from there so guys thank you very much for watching this video if you're new to the channel please hit the subscribe button and uh keep following me if you're coming back you want to see my other previous videos on i everything that i did just click on the link above it will take you to that and you can wait till the end screen subscribe guys and i love you so this is it for today so stay tuned. If there's anything else, we'll definitely see you next time, guys. Thanks.